This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. I'm at the BT Tower. I've got Spencer Fearon and Dillian White's brother with me. No, not, not, and Dylan White's brother. That's a liberty. Oh, that, what, yeah. So he's not a man himself? No, that's fine. No, like, but regardless, no, you're taking liberties. No, no, no. Leave the man, let him no, do his no, thing. No, no, no. He, no. he must be on his interview. Just continue. No, but you're getting twisted. Anyway, no, why are you in my no. interview, though? Nah, joking. Don't, don't be like that, buddy. <laughs> don't be like that. Let's continue. continue. <laughs> Anyways, well, that's what he gets called, or baby ting. Have you seen the comments on IFL? Yeah, but I'll be a baby ting. It's all right. <laughs> All right, I'm going to come to you first, Spencer. Quickly talk about what you're doing in Bosnia with the MTK Foundation. Yeah, uh, remembering Srebrenica is uh, is commemoration of uh, uh, the war that went out in the Bosnian War. So I'm really, really grateful. Um, Emily Formbury, I went to uh, something that was hosted in the Houses of Commons, uh, which was really cool. And they said they wouldn't mind uh, me going out there to, to give a couple of speeches out there. Um, so I'm going there. So a big thank you to um, Nured Aziz. Uh, he's like he's like a really good guy, and I'm really really grateful to MTK Global Foundation for sponsoring it. So I'll be out there for a few days, um, speak to the war victims and the war and the war survivors, and 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 yeah, to take back something from it. But it's going to be documented as well. And uh, I think Matt Christie's going to do something on it in the boxing news. So I'm I'm really grateful for that. Dean White, now your turn. Yeah, good man. Good man. Oh, good. The knowledge, you know, we've got to give this man his space and grace to do his thing. I'm learning from this big man here. You understand? So it's all good what he's doing. It's big moves, man. And uh, it's good, it's good. That's that's big. I remember that uh, Bosnia thing a long time ago. And it, was, it, was, it was yeah, you understand it? Um, and you know, it's easy to forget things that have happened. You know, only because he mentioned that it kind of came back to me. Like I was like, wow, yeah, I remember. You know how uh, deep that was them times. So that's good, good work. Let's talk boxing. Uh, Deontay Wilder has been talking to Zone. It's reported that he's rejected the $100 million deal and he's going to announce his fight on Showtime uh, with Dominic Brittle tomorrow. Your thoughts? Do you know, I did hear that. I just obviously came out from the States today and I did hear that while I was out there. There was, there was mentioned it. For me personally, it's a lot of money. The money he's turning down, was it $100 million? Or allegedly $100 million for free fights. It's, it's ludicrous. He's not even getting that kind of money. But he's obviously got a plan and a direction and he's loyal to the team he's with I guess you can't you can't beat loyalty you, you know what I mean that, you, can't. you cannot beat so we've got to take our hat off to the kid and say well done you know what I mean he's stuck with the people who's got him this far so he believes in himself I will conquer that 100 million at a later date so and, and I'll do it with the people that believed in me when no one else did so kudos to him man we've got to give him his credit me personally, it's a lot of money, and this is a short, small business or short, short, short business in terms of boxing career. He could go and lose his next fight, and uh, not make that money, and then he's going to be kicking himself. So, but we've got to still give the man that he's a man. He's given his credit. He's done well. Me personally, I'd have to think about that a few more times. Spencer, um, obviously, it looks like he's fighting Dominic Bra Dominic Brazil next. That's going to be on Showtime pay per view. Again, if that doesn't do great numbers, um, and then. Where does he really go from there? Because then he's going to be demanding a higher, a sort of a higher purse against your, your Joshua's and Furies. But if he's only doing, say, 100 to 200k bars on Showtime, then doesn't that not leave him in a sort of precarious situation? Yeah, it, it does, but you have to look at it. Tyson Fury is now unavailable because fair play to Tyson Fury to sign that mega deal with ESPN. Uh, massive props to him. And, and massive props to MTK Global for, for being incremental in that deal being signed for, for Tyson Fury. $103 million. That's like crazy, right? All the credit in the world to, to, to them for doing that and to Tyson Fury for stepping up. So now Tyson Fury's got a major TV network. And T. Josh has got Sky and DAZN, right? So where does that leave? Where does that leave Deontay Wilder? He could have most probably done the rematch, but now you know the rematch can be a little bit harder to go do because Tyson Fury's now got a big player in the game as well. So what, what, what is he meant to do? And like, and certain times I've been very, very critical on Deontay Wilder, but I'm saying one thing that I have to give him: he's a person that does want to fight, right? And he actually wants to fight the best, the best who have got titles. If you ain't got a title, we don't want to mix with you because you should be fighting Dylan White. No doubt. How long has Dylan White been a contender, been number one, been a manager? Yeah. It's, been, it's been ages, right? And it hasn't happened. And I can't even knock Deontay Wilder because Deontay Wilder is saying, well, Dylan, well, Dylan's going to give me a bag of trouble, right? For not the financial reward that I would like to become the recipient of. But Dominic Brazil, that's Andy Joshua's leftovers. Yeah, and let's be real. I, I hear you. I hear you. Watch this. What, what I'm going to say on that note is this. Brazil obviously lost to Joshua a little while ago. For me though, he's improved. 
he's got more experience since that fight. And he's had some amazing wins since then also. And he's come up from a lot of adversity because he didn't have the experience. He come from what, American football? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he didn't have that boxing experience. See now, he's got a little bit more boxing experience because he's been through, the, he lost to Andrew Joshua, got stopped. He's had adversities against Ngonu, or whatever his name is, Ngonu. Yeah, yeah, he's had adversities against Mansour. That was a very good win though, you know? He's come back on some credible wins. So we got to give him his due because it's not everyone that can come back from that kind of adversity from losing, like my bro Dill done, and what Dominic it's Brazil. Not, it's it's only Dylan. That, it, yeah. Me, has done. like when it comes on levels, what Dylan White has done, Dylan White is testimony. Like if things, you get a bad day in the office, you still go back to the office and you work out what you're gonna go and do. You get a good team around you, right? You be loyal to your team and you keep on persevering. Dylan White to me is 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 the the blueprint of overcoming adversity and coming out the other side. Because you know, Dylan White's won over the British public, how, how he conducts himself now. You know what I mean, all, all the credit in the world should be given to Dylan White. What is going on with the WBC though? How can they order an interim title fight between Brazil and, and White and then make Brazil mandatory for, for Wilder? They, they, they're in law unto themselves, it seems. They're doing what they want because like you said, they mandated it and then they pulled it back because Fury and Wilder wasn't happening. And then they mandated Brazil ridiculous I don't, we don't even have the answer to this I believe something they're gonna you know do something I heard someone say uh, Eddie Hearn saying in the interview they might sue hey I'm not sure I don't know anything about that but listen they are crazy who knows where it's gonna go next if, if whoever wins out of that we just gotta wait and see I, obviously I'm sure Wilder might win but uh, Brazil is a tough cookie as well you know what do you reckon well you know what it is what it is <laughs> these things, these things, nothing else surprised me in boxing. I've been, I've, been, yeah. I've, been, I've, been, I've been following boxing for way too long for me to, you know what I'm trying to say, for me to even worry about what the WBC are doing. You know I mean, I just like to see good fights. I mean, like we got on the weekend. Do you know what I mean? Even though it was one side, it was still a good fight. Come on, man. It was a good fight. It was, it was, it was, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Right, right. And he's, he's not even listening too well because he's. My ears is. Was it what? 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 Why was it a pay-per-view fight? No, what was it? If you've paid ninety dollars for that, a second, it was a pay-per-view fight because the fight is more to do with when you get if you if you accumulate what the two fighters have done in their careers, right? Go check your one out. Well, Mikey Garcia is a four-weight world champion, four-weight world champion, and unbeaten four-weight world champion, right? Um, Errol Spence is this new hot kid coming through. Mikey uh, Mikey should be given all the credit in the world because he's the one that stepped up for the challenge. Similar to what Roberto Duran did in 1980 when he went and fought Sugar Ray Leonard, but the difference is Sugar, Sugar Ray Leonard, when taking at Duran, when Duran stepped up to him, Duran was a man that that had four four fights at welterweight to season himself to be prepared to go in there at welterweight. He he, in. he just jumped in and 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 like and but that's what made it interesting because you had many observant, learned heirs that were saying, "Boy, Mike is going to win this fight." Saying they saw right. something, you know. Thank you very they, much. So I'd like to know what they saw because, uh, listen, Errol Spence is a real deal, man. What I'll say on that is not why it was a pay-per-view fight. I think that's wrong because before it, it's definitely a pay-per-view fight. No, what I'll say, if you've paid for, if you've paid ninety dollars in America for that, are you satisfied with that? Well, do you know what? I, I, I'm not sure they are because the way he was dominated behind that jab and just every round, you know. So it, it's it's a hard one. Do you know? It's, listen. The atmosphere in there was amazing, so I'm saying, I guess, yeah, these, enjoyed it, yeah? listen, the atmosphere was crazy. Was it 47,000 people? Like, you know, the, was it the Dallas Cowboys Stadium? Yeah. Being in there, the arena, it was like a cold room. It was really, it's different. You know what I mean? It's different to being here. Nothing's like UK and the UK fans for me, but it was still amazing being there, the spotlights and what was going on. But what, what what's happened is you've gone out there and these guys... Mikey Garcia got under his skin, Earl Spence. That's why, because he said, I'm the better boxer, I've got better footwork, I'm the faster man. So he's gone out there and just showed him, or showed the world, not even just him, that, you know, you, 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 you picked the wrong one. I'm the truth, you understand? And exactly what he done. He went out there and dominated with that jab, and then later on, um, he started touching him up to the body, and you can see, you see, you know what, he was actually hurting him quite a lot, and you can see him physically weaken, weaken. But I give him credit, he's a tough old bruiser. You know what I mean? He took, he took a lot of punishment and he managed to go the 12 rounds. The, his family was going to pull him out. But credit to him, he stuck in there. Took the, the, but to be honest, I believe 
El could have probably put a little bit more pressure on a little bit earlier, but he was being calculated because there was a lot on the line. It was it's, it's his um, legacy, him taking this guy and taking him to school and teaching him a lesson and showing the world, listen, how dare you talk about this little man coming up to my weight to challenge me? I'm going to punish this boy. I'm going to show this boy something. So, and that's why he started to up the tempo. I don't, I think he boxed in within himself very comfortably. That's what I felt. Uh, you know what I mean? Um, and I think, listen, that jab was just amazing. He had so much different variations on that jab. Quick snappy ones. Then he, he came out, of, yeah, he had so much different ones to the body. And, and he started going to the body from round one. So any fighters out there watching, you got to learn and understand these top boys, Mayweather, Spence, they're going to the body early slowing these down, guys down for the later rounds. But that was a quality operation. And dismantling of Garcia, is, for me, is, is a great guy because like he's a four-weight world champion. And he's, he, he's come up and beat these bigger guys. Broner, um, what's the other guy's name? Broner's stable mate. Um, the tall guy. Easter Jr. Easter Jr. He come up and beat him. All these guys are bigger. So when they're saying uh, he's gone up to weight classes, yes, but he fought these guys who were equally not... Not small guys. He was bigger than them. Do you understand? So we don't want to discredit um, Earl Spencer's performance. No way. You know what I mean? And that's what people will be saying like, oh, well, you're meant to win. You're meant to win and convince yourself. He's in a no-win situation for simple fact of this. Errol, Errol Spence is a guy that is fighting a smaller guy, allegedly, right? He's, he's fighting a guy. So if Errol went out there and banged him out in, in one or two rounds, oh, you're just a big bully. Right, he's too small. He to right, and check this one out. But if he'd have lost that fight, Oh, you ain't nobody. You know what I mean? Right, you 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 beat a weight drain, Kel Brook and blah. You know what I mean? So he was in a no-win situation, and it seems like now it still seems like he's in a no-win situation. But I'm just glad. I, I remember seeing him from the, the 2012 Olympics um, when he got jobbed against the Kazakhstan, and they brought him back into to the tournament. Uh, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a wonderful talent. I spent a lot of time without him when I was out in Vegas as well. Myself, Babatundi Ajay as well, like 2014. The guy is a student of the game, man. He's a, he's a student of the game. All the credit in the world. And, like, the best should be fighting the best, right? And to move in the right direction, I'm not too keen on him fighting Manny Pacquiao. I'd like to see him rather fight Keith Furman. Yeah, I want yeah. Keith Furman to have one more, one more fight. Keith right. I want Keith Furman to have one more fight. And then, and then yes, and then definitely fight Errol Spence. Then the winner of Call for the Calm, but it's going to be a little bit more difficult because he's with top rank, so it could be a bit hard, but I'd like to see the best fight the best and hopefully God willing that, that we get that. But you know what? All the props in the world to Errol Spence, his team. Yeah, you know I mean, we have to salute Errol Spence, man. Well done. He's done, done a fantastic job. All right, Spencer, Dean White, thank you very much for coming to IFL TV. You're doing what you're doing, Umar. You're, 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 you're getting a guy now, you know? Yeah, Umar's only sick. Appreciate it. Bless up, yeah? Take care.